Arthur and welcome to the people. As I mentioned, I'm Jorge or George, as you prefer. Uh, welcome. I know that it's not uh, the best uh, schedule for you, but the idea is try to share our knowledge in the best way as possible. Um, I'm a new observant here in Colombia. We just opened the office like uh, three months ago, and we are really happy to share this kind of ideas with you. Uh, Sartre mentioned it. Uh, the idea for this short 30, 30 minutes conversation is talk about the software complexity and the quality. And this is based in the experience that we had here with the several projects or customers that we were working before. So in order to start, I just wanted to share this couple of ideas with you. Uh, when we went to the office or when we visit the customers, we try to solve uh, the problems or we try to provide uh, brilliant ideas or uh, share our time uh, using uh, different technologies or databases or something like that. But the main goal behind of that is uh, try to deliver value to our customers, no matter the technology, no matter the language, no matter the country, no matter the items, the main idea behind that is try to deliver value to our customers. Uh, and usually we try to do in a correct way. We usually provide value, but sometimes eventually it happens in a different way. So um, the idea with this uh, short conversation is try to check about this kind of failures that eventually we could face in the projects or with the customers. Um, I mean, the issues could be, for example, associated with the language or it could be associated, for example, with the understanding of business requirements or, for example, with the bad communication with the customers or the bad choice of the technology. But I wanted to be focused in one that I consider that is the most important thing that we face it today and is about the complexity. So what, what is complexity in terms? Well, um, just to bring like idea about the complexity. Well, when I was a child, I used to tell uh, scary stories to my young brothers or my young people close to me. And right now, when when I say that I'm a software engineer or a software developer, I mean, many people look me like, okay, wh what what it means? What you are trying to explain to me? I mean, uh, software is a really difficult thing to explain for the people that are not related with the with the technology, and that could be scary. But um, I try to recall when I went to the college or the university, and as directly to say, it's the only thing that is variant or only thing that is content for us is the change. And that I guess that is the biggest problem for us as a software developers. Try to understand this kind of complexity. I mean, the complexity of the changes. So when I went to the work and I heard to uh, uh, people from IT that say that they are working using, for example, agile methodologies, I say, OK, what is to be an agile? Agile is something that is related with change. But I mean, uh, something um, something that calls my attention when I talk with the people from IT is that uh, usually they say that they are practicing or they are agile. Um, and I try to go deeper in, in these kind of uh, phrases. So uh, what, what for you means to be in agile? So agile is not only, for example, to use like an uh, scrum ceremonies to practice a daily is to make like a planning or a retrospectives or something like that. I mean, that's for me, that's not it, the only meaning to be in agile. Agile needs to be or needs to mean something different, something deeper. So years ago, Jim Hagsmith explained in like a simple word uh, that for me is like a 
the most complete sentence about what is to be in agile. Agile is not uh, like a practice or monies or uh, have a dailies or a planning or something like that. Agile is uh, the way that, that we as a people are able to adapt and respond to the changes. I mean, for the changes, it means uh, everything technologies and dependencies and libraries and people in communication and so on. So these kind of changes and the way that we can respond to these kind of changes is the way that we usually try to manage uh, as a person, how can we be or not to be an agile? Um, but sadly here, for example, we usually try to understand that the projects that are managed by an agile methodologies are not really an agile. Uh, Benka, that is like an IT guy that I usually recommend to follow, he mentioned that today the software projects are managed like an, a waterfall uh, methodology that we usually to name uh, years ago. So if we, for example, are planning a delivery project and deadlines and uh, some deliveries, but we are, uh, for example, running uh, dailies or plannings, uh, try, try to imagine if that's really to be an agile. Or uh, in this case, we are just trying to paragraph uh, like uh, the waterfall methodology that we're using. So try to keep in that mind. And, and also try to understand what's the correct meaning for us in order to be an agile. Again, just to finish this kind of um, idea is uh, agile for me is about to keep the peace in our delivery projects and no matter the changes that we can have. Uh, so, for example, if the technology change, if the people change in the project, I mean, people are leaving, people are hiring, or if, the, for example, the business requirements are changing constantly, how we can keep the peace of the deliveries? I guess that is the main idea behind, behind to being agile. But um, to be honest with you, uh the complexity of the change is what we makes uh a difficult to understand about the software projects so one thing is about to keep the peace in the changes and another thing is how we can as software developers adapt ourselves in order to make it easier and simple so one of the biggest problems that we usually to solve in the delivery of the projects is about complexity, as I mentioned it. So the complexity is like a, the blocker or is like a barrier that make to us a difficult way to adapt for changes. The complexity is about a different situations that we need to face every day in our job, in our daily job, in order to make a successful delivery. The complexity, as I mentioned, it could be a barrier or also could be like a, um, like a goal that we need to face in order to make a, a better software developers. Um, also, another thing that make the complex things uh, worse is about the system designs. I mean, today we are facing different situation no matter if you are working for example in a medical application or a social insurance or our airplane application or a taxes application i mean today we are delivering or we are using different kind of um, complexities and also the designs are linked with these complexities today is uh, like a um, critical the delivery software in a good shape uh, right now if you are comparing years ago is like a, the, the cost of failure is really high because for almost everything in our daily life we are using software so if something is failing probably the cost to fix the problem the cost of failure is really uh, high 
Um, sadly, uh, the complexity that we are adding in our software products are really hard. Uh, and again, by complexity, we are trying to, uh, or we need to define two different things. One thing is about the inherent complexity. I mean, when we are talking again with, uh, for example, the tax application, the insurance applications, the airlines applications, those are like uh, the inherent complexity associated with that. And we couldn't remove because those are like uh, the business requirements that we need to solve or we need to meet. So that is uh, like uh, the most important thing that we need to deliver. But also there are another things that we need to deal with it. I mean, we have the business requirements, but the way that we are using to solve these kind of business requirements, those kind of solutions or those kind of libraries or frameworks or technologies that we are using, these kind of tools adds more complexity. And we usually call this kind of situation like an accidental complexity. Let's try to imagine, for example, an, an airplane solution. And if we add like a framework or a pattern or a library, and if we don't know what that library or, or framework contains, we are adding more complexity. And that accidental complexity, the idea behind of it is try to remove or reduce in our projects. So the idea is try to reduce the inherent complexity and try to remove or reduce the accidental complexity that we usually we usually to call. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, we are victims of our uh, products or our job because uh, we usually try to solve our problems on our designs, adding more complexity that is really required. We usually say it here in Colombia that we don't need to kill like a mosquito with a bazooka. It means that we need to try to think about the correct ways the correct paths or the correct tools in order to solve the, the, the correct problems. So this is one way that we are using or we are adding complexity in our problems. Try to think about the tools or the libraries that we are using in order to solve the problems. Um, I mean, I just said several times complexity and complexity and the problems associated with that, but the main idea behind of this conversation is try to understand what makes a software complex and how we can deal with it. So uh, there are several points and probably you face it in the past about this kind of problems or this kind of situation. So we wanna go in one by one and probably you face it as I mentioned it before these kind of situations and you could be familiar aside with this kind of situation so what makes the software complex i mean probably just you, you notice today that uh, there are too many moving parts associated with it i mean if you recall years or centuries ago the systems were were really easy to understand uh today they are super complex i mean if you can think right now uh, talking about the microservices, the queues, the messaging, the databases, this kind of situations makes a really complex uh, the design of the of the one single solution. So this is one thing that makes the uh, software really complex and really to understand. And probably you as a software developers uh, try to get the idea about the tools that you are using but eventually the, there are another uh, hundred of different tools that are working behind of the scenes in order to make that the your solution try to work for example services for example the cloud services for example the databases the messaging the queues and so on and those kind of services or layers or moving parts make the software really complex. So the idea is 
try to avoid or use the or or don't use the tools that eventually you don't need because as i mentioned the idea is to reduce or remove the complexity as we want it talking about the moving parts uh today well uh, we are talking several times about the distributed systems. So you can try to imagine that there are several services associated. For example, when you make a click a button in a single web page or you touch your screen in your mobile cell phone, uh, to be honest with you, it looks like a miracle that one application can work because if something could fail, eventually it can change another blockers. I mean, there are several solutions, there are a lot of balancers, there are, I mean, a, a couple of technologies that can help to us. But if you can think, there are several services associated with that. So um, um, the, the idea behind of this is try to think about the technology that we are using. Is the right technology for the right problem or probably are we adding uh, more complexity in order to make the solution easy to understand? And also try to think that this is like uh, the gift that we are um, giving to us in the future in order to say that we don't have or we could have a technical depth in order to reduce this kind of the problems for the future. This is like a single idea about the microservices, things that we are using today. Three different examples, Amazon, Twitter, and Netflix. And I don't wanna go deeper or using a magnifier, but this is like a, the main idea about using microservices. You can imagine how this is working and how the relationship between those kind of services and other different layers that they are using are complex and how it make complex the solutions. Um, another thing that make our software complex is about the configurations or, uh, for example, the layers on non-necessary components that we are adding in our applications. Um, years ago, I was checking an application and I noticed that, for example, they were using like an XML files today, for example, JAML files in order to make like a simple configuration. And yeah, it could be easier for us in order to understand and in order to switch. But eventually when those files uh, grew, grew up uh, really high and, and if we don't have like a short configuration files and also these files became like a monster could be a really difficult i recall one project that i used to work years ago and to be honest with you we needed to have one single developer preparing those configuration files before to the delivery the project and that task takes like a i don't know one week in order to prepare the configuration file because uh, the customization associated with this file was really complex. So uh, you can try to imagine, for example, in order to set up the testing environments using this kind of configuration. So it means that, for example, we are wasting our time. Try to imagine if we need to invest our time in order to configure and if the configuration is wrong and we needed to go back and deeper of those configuration files. Uh, it could be like, a, I mean, we are trying to invest our effort in other different tasks that are not relevant. So the idea is uh, try to reduce these kind of things, the, the configuration, the non-necessary components, and the too many layers that eventually we are adding in our components. Um, when I try to, to check, for example, the configuration files, uh, comes to my mind one single word that I heard years ago. I mean, the, the configuration files, the XML files, uh, needs to be like a people. Uh, I mean, needs to be cute, needs to be small, needs to be easy to understand. Uh, but if the, if the files go bigger and bigger, it could be, as I mentioned, it, uh, like a monster. So if you are facing this kind of problems, uh, uh, 
it could give like a warning sign in order to say, okay, is, is this the right problem that we are not, we are trying to solve? Is this the right design? Or maybe we can try to do another different things in order to make the, the simple and easy to understand for the future. Because we need to think in our future, we as a developers or probably when we deliver the software, it could be like a easy or hard to maintain for the other peoples. How we can identify the problems and also how we can fix these kind of problems. Um, another thing that make a uh, really difficult for us to understand the situation is about how is uh, simple or complex to test the, the solutions. I recall uh, years ago when I facing a problem in one single solution, someone mentioned it that they uh, remove it or disable the, the testing in, in the libraries that they, they were using. And I, I just said, why you remove it or why you deleted the test? And they just mentioned that, okay, they just uh, implemented another different solution and the uh, the way to configure the test was really difficult so i mentioned it okay is that a real problem probably it means that the design was not the best one at that time and probably the complexity associated with the solution was really difficult to understand and also it gives like a warning signal in order to say that the design was not really good Another thing that makes the software complex is about the invisible changes. What it means about the invisible changes? Um, for example, um, I try to check the code uh, using like a pair programming or a code reviews. And years ago, I was checking one source code and we needed to understand what happened with that, that problem situation. Uh, because the software was working in a different way that we expected. So I try to understand the code. I am Java developer, so I could read Java code. So I usually said one thing that probably is familiar for you in I just starting to debugging the application. So I just set a breakpoint and try to analyze what the code was doing. So I went line by line trying to understand what the code is doing. So, for example, if the code said get something, I usually expect that the code get or return some variable. And if the code makes set something, I usually expect that they update something in the database or in the service layer or something like that. But when I try to, to, to make like a the book, I noticed that the one method say get something, but it started several process at the same time. And to be honest with you, it was really difficult to understand what happened on that time. So the idea with the invisible change is try to be clear with the code. I mean, it's really annoying uh try to capture the problems with the code that are not clear for us um so the idea behind of this is how we as a software developer are investing our time trying to solve the problems or for example try to uh, make like a refactor in, in order to make understandable the code not only for us in the future for other developers tool uh, because try to imagine it could be like a value time effort in the future, because if the code is clear, probably we don't waste our time in order to understand what the code is doing. Um, one thing really frustrated me, or maybe two different things. One is the code that should work, but is not working. And another thing that frustrated me is the code that should work, but is not working. So um, the idea is that the code should be transparent, should be clear, it should be easy to identify the bugs, uh, should be really 
uh, easy to uh, debug the code and understand what the code is doing. But if we have uh, several methods that probably are doing more than the method or the class is trying to say, could be a time waste in order to identify and fix the problems. Another thing that make uh, the software complex is about the mutability. And what is mutability? Probably you, you know more than me about this kind of situation. And it's about the way that we share uh, some values in our code. I mean, probably is not the best way that we are using in our code. Uh, sharing is, is nice, sharing is good. So for example, when we have methods that are super clear and we are sending information to the methods and we are returning information in our method, it's, it's super nice because the code is clear. But when we have these uh, capabilities to share the mutability, it could be like, a, uh, here we usually say a devil's work. It could be like a nightmare because the content of a variable uh, could be changes no matter uh, the method or no matter the classes is. So the idea is that we need to, to be really focused in about what we are sharing and the possibility to use the, the mutability only in the certain case. One single example is about, uh, for example, the, the threads. If you recall with the Java API, uh, we have the, for example, the, the runable or the thread class. If you recall, we have the method run. It was like a single method, but it's really an annoying because we have like a void method. It means that it didn't return anything and it doesn't have a parameters. So the method is not waiting for anything, but voila, the idea is that the uh, the thread needs to process something but if we are not sending anything and if we are not expecting anything how we can manage this kind of situation by looking uh today there are other several situations that we can use or we can implement this kind of threats uh, situations in order to avoid the uncontrolled mutability uh, like we usually to use when we are using threads or the uh, the runnable interfaces. Um, another thing that makes the software complex is about the state of changes. Um, so try to think that when we are designing a solution probably is the most useful thing that we usually try to do. Try to imagine a solution, try to think a components or a modules or a classes. And I usually try to call one component. And if I call this component, I need to send this message and this message need to call another different API. And also I need to create a wrapper or a DTO for some specific components and I need to call other two or three different APIs and imagine this kind of situation or the states that we need to call in our API. So uh, our perception of as a programmers is quite different because all of these kind of things, all of these kind of states or situations are in our mind. So the way that you think a solution probably is a different one from the other developer or other design and trying to map this kind of solution in a software code is quite different so this is why we usually try to say that we are wired and the perception for us is really different um, here in colombia we usually say okay george when this feature will be delivered and i usually say it oh, I think that I will deliver it in five minutes or maybe today, but five minutes for me could be mean, could be mean five minutes for other different person and probably these five minutes could be uh, like a one hour or one day or one week because the, these states and these constructions of the mind could be a different ones. So 
try to, to be really clear with your code, try to map these kind of situations in your code in a correct way. Uh, try to think that we are delivering uh, code, not only for me, for other person that probably in the future needs to understand, needs to understand, need to fix the box in the future for this kind of something. Um, talking about the complexity, another thing that makes the software complex is about the cohesion and the lack of cohesion. Uh, I, I usually try to, to ask for the people if they consider that the long classes or long method are good or are nice or are fine. And probably the most uh, typical answer is that the long methods or long class are bad. Um, but usually when I read my code or I read the code for the other developers, I usually saw long methods and long class. So it means that we are working in a different way that we think. Uh, so the idea with the cohesion is, okay, we need to, to try to understand, we need to be clear with the code. I mean, try to write uh, short methods, short classes, um, as uh, one pattern said, keep it simple as possible. Um, I recall that, for example, I was doing a, a code check, a, a code review for, for a problem that we faced uh, months ago. And I noticed one super long method, like uh, 20 parameters of input and like a uh, hundred of hundreds of lines code and try to analyze and try to get what was the problem of that method was really difficult. And uh, using, for example, the GID or the control version, I noticed that that method started like uh, one year before that time. And I noticed that that method was really simple. I mean, one single method, one single parameter of entry, uh, like a 10 lines of code and was really super nice. But after that, I don't know, business requirement change and uh, technologies inclusion and other different things. And that beautiful and short method became like a monster uh and try to understand what is happening there what's really really uh, difficult so here the message is try to keep in in refactoring try to keep in moving other components to another different classes in order to make easy understandable and easy to read the code so the idea is uh, not, not, not use uh, the, the similar situation that I faced years ago, try to be more proactive. The, the refactor is a good tool in order to make the code easy to understand, not, on, not only for us. Um, this comes with another mind, with, uh, with another idea, and is that, uh, that we need to think I mean, about the, the modularity. Uh, because if we are doing change in one single method in, and, it, and this method grew up constantly, probably the frequency of the changes will be higher. So if we are using, for example, the refactor, probably the modules will be separated and also the changes for each module is a really difficult or maybe a easy one to, to understand. So the idea is think in, think in about models, think in about the frequency of the changes, think in about uh, create the functions, create the components, uh, try to keep the cohesion uh, as, as you prefer, but also try to make the, the, the code really clear and understandable. Another thing that makes uh, the complex uh, linked with the software is about the dependencies. Um, 
I recall years ago when I used to program with uh, .NET applications, we usually have like a DLL libraries. Uh, now we are using, for example, NPM. And well, to be honest with you, I dislike NPM because when you use NPM install, it don't know several and several of libraries. And eventually we don't know what these libraries means or what contains. Um, one, one junior developer mentioned it to me, um, I don't have the problems because uh, I'm not using NPM, I'm, I'm using Maven. And I say, uh, okay, are, are you using Maven or Maven is using to you? Because we usually face the same problems. Maven or Gradle or NPM uh, probably is a good tool, but we need to be really careful about the way that we are using this kind of tool. If, for example, it downloads uh, several of several of libraries and we don't know what this library means, it probably gives us like a hint that the design of the way that we are solving the problems is not the, the really one. Um, I recall one project that someone disabled the, the unitary testing and I mentioned it, why we are disabled the testing? Now it's because we upgrade the libraries and for some specific reason after this upgrade, the tests were failing. So it means that there is some other problem that we are not checking or we are not facing. So the idea behind of this is try to check what we are installing in our applications. I mean, we can really easy to install one library in application. We can have like a, a lunch uh, meeting and we can hear that this is a beautiful library that works for X and Y solutions and is really easy to install and to adapt in your application. But what it means, probably there are another dependencies that are uh, susceptible to failure in our future. Uh, so yeah, probably it's easy to install in, in our application, but what if we need to, to roll back? What if we need to switch or change the library? Could be easier or could be uh, difficult for us. So try to keep that in mind. Um, and another thing associated with the dependencies is that, yeah, it's probably easy to install, but the maintain could be a really uh, difficult one. Uh, probably the libraries needs to have like a maintain uh, time, probably needs to have like a support. Uh, and if that support is not more available, what will happen with our application in the future? Here we usually mentioned about the incompatibility. So probably we need to install another different of libraries and also adding more complexity in our applications. Um, one, one thing that we, we usually to say is if it's really to install, try to check what happened in the future if I need to switch. Uh, what is the time invest that we need to apply in order to replace the, this library? Could be easier or could be uh, faster. Talking about also libraries, keep in mind about the re reversibility uh, that it, it was the thing that I mentioned. It is easy to replace this kind of library. Um, sometimes I, I usually mention this kind of thing uh, about the library and it's about the, the contact points that we are using in, in, our, uh, in our applications. So um, comes to my mind one single example, using a library is like, a, for example, having a dating. Uh, so it's easy, for example, to replace if I dislike is not a big problem. Uh, probably, probably someone will be disappointed, but I, I guess that is not a big issue. But the frameworks is 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 a, a bigger risk because a framework is like a marriage. Uh, to replace a framework in one single solution could be a super difficult 
uh, design uh, or decision that we need to apply. Also, keep in mind about the, the right choice of the technology. Probably, as I mentioned, we are trying to kill a mosquitoes with the bazookas. Uh, don't overcomplex the problems. Don't overcomplex the solution. Don't add complexity in our solution uh, today. Um, and again, about libraries and dependencies, don't build the libraries that you can download, but don't download if you don't really need and you don't really install in your application. Um, thinking about libraries, I mean, there are several sources and right now the internet is open and we have several solutions running by super good and experienced developers today, but try to to check before you install one single library or framework in your applications because probably you could add more complexity and also the problems could be higher in the future before uh, you can fix one single problem in one single solution um and just to conclude, I mean, we are, we are in a learning process. The idea here is just to reduce the complexity in our applications, in our solution. We were talking about the libraries, the frameworks, the cohesion, uh, the too many moving parts in our applications, the dependencies, the configuration files. So treat, uh, tr try to to check this kind of ideas in your current solution or in your future solutions, if you can make like um, little adjustments, uh, like a refactoring things in your applications in order to make easier the things for you in the future. Try to think that like, uh, software design and software developer is a gift and is a gift that you are bringing to yourself in the future. What do you want in the future, like a difficult application to understand and to solve, or probably you could have like a clean code, understandable and easy to understand and easy to solve the problems for the future. Um, I'm, I'm not the master and this is like a, the final message that I, I wanted to share with you. Uh, we are in a learning cure but this is the like uh, the experience that we had with uh, different projects or a different observation that we are doing and i hope that this kind of ideas uh brings to you like a uh, little ideas that you could apply in your future projects and that's it appreciate so much uh uh to the team to the assistants and arthur to attend this kind of meeting i hope that you enjoyed this kind of presentation a again i'm not a master but if you have some question that i could answer i will try to answer and again thank you very much for your time arthur yeah i'm here uh maybe someone have questions uh hi guys can you hear me of course uh yes first of all jorge thank you for presentation um i uh, i think this is really important uh, all things you mentioned and i literally uh fully understand what you said because uh, i have been working uh on medical, uh, on complex medical project during five years, and uh, <laughs> almost er almost understand every problem. And uh, also, one thing that I'm faced is a challenge to convince customers invest time and money into refactoring because every time when we say that we need like five days 10 days for refactoring customers think that uh it is needed for developer that, that this is something that this is some toy which developers need because developers uh read about some patterns uh, some crazy stuff they 
uh, developers need it. We don't have money time to uh, to give you for refactoring. So, uh, question is next. Uh, where you face it with situations where it is hard to convince customers to invest money and how uh, do you uh, how do you do it how do you convince customers to uh, spend time and, and money for refactoring sure Raman, and thank you very much for 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 your for your question well as you mentioned it's really hard to sell this kind of uh, time in, in in the in the applications and to be honest with you i think that it just depends about the experience um i recall that you know we worked in one project and i don't know for some specific reason the architect said we don't need to test the applications just focus in the code and deliver the code and i just mentioned I guess that is not the best solution that we are delivering, but if you are doing that, okay, we can continue. But uh, to be honest with you, it can bring like a monster in the future. And it happened. I mean, we needed to go back and back in order to, for example, start working in the integration test and start checking, for example, the coverage. And after that, the architect noticed that they invest time, for example, in the testing, in the integration and working like a transversal things, like, for example, you mentioned it, the refactor was like a good solution. So I guess that the best hint that I give to you is, uh, for example, try to check with your co-workers or developers uh, what is the measure that you are investing, for example, fixing the problems or checking a box or identifying a book uh, that if you were making a solution better, uh, starting with a good design or a good solution. Um, I recall that we mentioned it because when we analyze the code and the time is best, for example, in order to identify and uh, solve a book was higher that if we were applying something like, a, for example, a refactor in the beginning of the project. And we started running good, but at the end, the, the cure was, okay, we are investing more time in identifying and solving books in order, or if we compare in order to deliver in a new features. Obviously, the, the architect was angry because why you are doing these kind of things? I suppose that you are experts and you are a really good programmers. So the idea is, okay, we are doing this kind of things. We are now the masters, but the idea is we need to try to work with a really good quality before to continue working in this kind of things. So yeah, it's a really difficult. Uh, I don't want to say that this is like a golden rule in, in order to use. We usually try to, for example, in our, uh, the deliveries that we were applying, try to use, uh, for example, the 80% of the times in the deliver the new features and also the other 20 percentage of the time try to make like a refactor or apply a good patterns or the clean code in our software developers not focus on see only in the delivery because as i mentioned it is something that we need to improve day by day in our the source code thank you for answer Good. Any other questions? Okay. If nothing, Jorge, I want to say thank you. You made a really good job. You made a really good presentation. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Arthur, for your support. And well, let's to see what happens in the future. Probably we will have another different and interesting topics for you. Thank you very much and appreciate your time. Thank you. Good. Please, dear participants, don't forget to fill in our feedback form. Thank you for attending our events. Have a good day and see you at our next events. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.